What's going on guys? We're here to talk about the all new Huawei MatePad family. As you can see in front of me, we got all the tablets here. I got the Pro, the big boy, the big daddy in front of me. I've been using this for the past couple weeks. And I'm here to answer some questions because I know a lot of you out there are looking for a tablet, possibly for the holiday season or maybe to go back to school with, or maybe just to have around the house to have some fun with. But, and you know, Huawei makes some really nice tablets. But you know, look, we all know elephant in the room, There's are, there are some restrictions out there when it comes to putting apps on Huawei products. So a lot of people are scared or they're apprehensive to get into something like this because they're like, well, if I wanna put my banking apps on, or if I wanna put like YouTube or video um, apps or watch ne like Netflix or Disney Plus, can I do it on these Maypads? And the answer is for the most part, yes you can. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the steps you can actually do to get most of these apps on the Huawei Maypad and I'll do it right here with the Pro. So with that, let's get down to it. All right, I'm gonna put these on the side here for the second, because I'm gonna work on the MatePad Pro for the most part, because I'm used to this size. I've been using this for the past couple weeks. By the way, all these MatePads are running uh, Huawei's new operating system, Harmony OS. They've been developing this for quite some time. It is very nice to use, very user-friendly. Um, it resembles some of their OSs that we know out there, so there is that, that familiarity that's in Harmony OS, but the speed and the efficiency within it is very impressive. Okay, so now let's um, talk about the big boy, the Pro. It's 2560 by 1600 uh, resolution on the display. It's a very nice display. It's a high frame rate on this. I think it's around 120 hertz thereabouts. Everything is very smooth, very fluid on this. And the design of this MatePad 11 Pro is really sweet. Look at this. It is thin. It is very nice. And it's a widescreen uh, design, so it's actually meant to be held widescreen. Of course, you can go portrait mode on this. And I would probably do this if I'm using it for, let's say, web browsing or reading an article or a blog or some documents, let's say Microsoft Word documents, which you can do as well. But if I'm just consuming content, you know, YouTube videos, Netflix, Disney Plus, et cetera, et cetera, I'm gonna go la landscape on this. And the keyboard, as you can tell, is actually designed for that. Now it's magnetic on the back of it, and you have two positions on the keyboard, one that's more upright, one's more angular. Of course, you can also flip it around and just go completely flat if you'd like to do that as well, if you wanna draw something or you wanna be a little bit more creative with it. And the keys, the keyboard, is very nice. I got a lot of emails coming in on this thing. I don't know what's going on here today, but a lot's happening. Um, I'm actually using the tablet, guys. It's not just for show, I actually using it. But the key travel on this is really good, and I love the width of the keyboard. So everything feels very comfortable, very ergonomic. So if I'm banging out emails or writing out documents, I have no issues at all with this. I wasn't expecting it to be this good, to be frank with you, all right? You're probably thinking to yourself, Bobby, great. Sounds good on specs, looks great but I need to put apps on the thing. Can I put apps on it? Yes, I'm gonna walk you through a couple ways to do that right now, so let's get into it. Let's start loading apps on this thing. Now, I already have some apps already, you can see here, if I just go through um, some of the app layout, I've got Adobe Photoshop, I've got Lightroom, I've got Instagram, Facebook, I tried YouTube Studio, unfortunately, you can only go web-based on this right now with that, so I'm gonna just delete that one right off, very easy to do, hold it down, uninstall, you're good to go. Um, I've got YouTube Advanced, which is a great alternative for YouTube out there. So it actually is all the YouTube content video. You can actually sign in with your Google ID to this and you can play it in the background. You can you know extract the window, move it around the de your desktop, wherever you want it to be. So it's a really nice app, as a matter of fact. A lot of people were recommending me this because I'm on YouTube quite a bit, especially here for the channel. We have to monitor our YouTube channel to see you know who likes our videos. By the way, please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already because it does help us out a lot, especially this video. Thank you very much. But uh, I got Telegram on here, WhatsApp, TikTok, there's a lot, Microsoft Word, and I'm gonna show you some other apps we can put on here as well. So one way to do it is going through the Huawei App Gallery. Now let's uh, go onto that right here and uh, receive notifications. I'm not a big fan of notifications. So they've got their gaming here. Uh, they have a different categorizations, new apps we love, new games we love, et cetera, et cetera. You can go into searching for games, for apps as well. And there's a lot of apps actually in this app gallery. You would be surprised at how much there is. And I mean, for here in Singapore, because we use obviously our Sync Pass, our banking apps, et cetera, et cetera, these are all here for the most part. So we're not gonna be missing a beat on that. And if something's not here, there's another way where you can pull the apps from, and I'll show you that in just a second. Yeah, let's go through with this. So like right here in Singapore, for example, Sync Pass, right? 
All right, it's our local ID. We can have that logged into our the system. So we need to pull up our taxes or our car registration and pay for things online. If we get a speeding ticket, we gotta pay. We can do it through SingPass. So on some of the apps will be portable because they're, they're designed for phones. So that will be something you will have to turn around and do. Um, so that just varies, okay? I mean, you're, this is something that you'll notice. And this happens with uh, some apps out there because they are developed. They're not designed for tablets. They're designed for phones. It's just part and parcel of what we do, right? And we'll go back into this and it goes back into landscape mode. But let's also go back into the app gallery for a second here because now I've got that. Let's say you want to do some banking, right? Now here in Singapore, we've got a few different banks. DBS is one. Let me just press that button right there. Digibank. So this is all designed to be used on Huawei products, okay? Because Huawei products are very popular here in Singapore. So this is something that all the banking institutions wanted to do. There we go, okay. Can allow to make calls, allow while using, allow, okay. So it'll say on here, with the absence of Google services on your device, banking services on the app will be affected. Push notification alerts or nearest ATM. So you can't use that because it would tie into Google Maps, et cetera, et cetera, but that's fine, not a big deal. Let's talk about Spotify, right? We gotta listen to music, right? Now we've got Spotify Lite and Spotify for Artists. What's interesting here is that Spotify is not available on the Huawei app gallery, but there's a list of various different options and from Pedal Search. What is Pedal Search? Pedal Search is sort of a search engine for apps, for Android apps thereabouts. And they're you know, filed under APKs because that's the file name for any Android app that you want to put on your device. And the cool thing about Android products is you can actually sideload apps. You don't have to go through a Google Play Store. You can actually download it from, you know, even though companies own websites for that matter. So that's what allows you to do is search for those apps and you can download it accordingly. So anyway, um, we're gonna go to Spotify Lite here and we're gonna install that. Now, as you can see, it's gonna pull from a site called apkpure.com. There's the app. It'll say, do you wanna download this? We'll click on download. It will actually download the APK to your device. Once it's done, It'll say, okay, no threats found, install. It installs it. And there you go. Then you can uh, log in, sign up, and you've got Spotify on your device. Simple as that. What about Netflix? We need Netflix in our lives, right? Yes, we do. Okay, again, Netflix. Takes me down to the website, pulls it up. There's the APK. It's automatically downloading this. It lets you know that it's downloading it as well. Now this is quite a large file at 115 megabytes, so it's gonna take a little bit, a couple seconds to download it. Once it's done, boom, no, fret, no threats found. As you can see how fast this is actually going on this. This is how quick it is to install apps on this. So it's almost like doing it from the Google Play Store or any, even Huawei's app gallery, except it's just going through Petasearch for this. And you can get started right there. You got full Netflix. What about Disney Plus? We're all on Disney Plus, right? You know? A lot of Marvel TV shows out there right now. We gotta find our Marvel shows. We just not can't be, we can't be left without with that, right? Notification to download it. Look how fast we're going on this. So see how quick it is to actually get a lot of things on this. It's quite impressive. So you're not really missing a beat for a lot of the content you're gonna get out there. Now, what do you say? What about email, for example? What about Gmail or et cetera, like, like that? Well, I actually use uh, Microsoft Outlook for the most part. And I just log in with my Gmail account and I have full access to my Gmail, all my emails and everything else like that. Plus, I actually like the Outlook app, app uh, for this matter because it includes calendar, includes everything I need inside of it. It's very organized. I just, I've liked it even on other devices that I've used in the past. So not just on this, but I've liked Outlook as well. But here, just in case you're wondering, Disney Plus, simple as that. Let me show you what Outlook looks like on here as a matter of fact. So I've got my, my Gmail right here. But as you can see, I've got all my stuff there. I've got my junk drafts sent, deleted, all that kind of stuff here. Also I've got my uh, geek culture email as well. Then I can go into calendar and see what's gonna go on today, all my different meetings, shoots coming up. All that is here on the calendar. So as you can tell, this is very nice, very intuitive. So if you're worried about Gmail, you don't need to use the Gmail app. Sometimes the Gmail app is good for some things, but actually I like Outlook for a lot of other things as well. Plus this ties into Microsoft Office, which you can also get here on this case in point for a lot of you who don't know you're going to think well can you watch youtube videos and the answer is yes you can through youtube advanced so what is youtube advanced exactly well in my terminology i'm going to call it like a shell that encapsulates youtube inside of it so you can log in with your google id there is a way to do this though let me kind of show you this as well i want to add account now i'm showing you on the screen here 
It'll say an app on your device is trying to sign into Google account. If this was intentionally, use sign in or Huawei if you have a device with this brand button to connect to Google sign in page. If not, press cancel to go back to the application that caused this dialog to show up. Okay, now a lot of people will want to press on sign in and actually will come up and say that the, you cannot do that. What you do is you press, you click on Huawei, establishes the link, sign in with your Google account, and then you are good to go. That's how you sign into YouTube Vance, just in case you're wondering. I don't want to, I already have signed into it, so don't need to sign into it again, but that's how it works. But as you can tell here, I've got all the videos, you know, recommendations from YouTube, um, you know, based on the content that I like to watch. And the cool thing about Vance is it actually almost acts like premium in a lot of ways. Now I pay for premium myself, but this does in the sense that it does block ads and it does block certain things. And you can also play YouTube in the background on your tablet. So let's say you want to, you know, listen to some music or, you know, listen to a podcast or that's on YouTube, but you want to do some work as well. You can actually do that. Case in point, let me just, uh, let's go to geek culture real quick. So example, if I want to, let's say, click on our this video, gives you a sense of, video here from, all right, guys, uh, something just dropped in the studio. Tell good volume on the tablet, by the way, right? As you can tell, this is sharp, looks great. Got all the information here. Then if I wanna move around with this, it's playing in the background. As you can see the windows here, so I can move this around as I'm watching myself. Then if I, let's say I wanna to go to my, you know, Microsoft Word, I wanna type out a document. I can do that. So. There you go. Then we want to turn the volume back up on the video. See here, razors up on the front here. You got your N95 filters and all that information and here. And on the back, it does walk you through about. I can bring it back to YouTube if I want. Uh, the straps, the light. Pause it. And then if I just want to get rid of YouTube, then I can as well. And we're back at it. So there you go. There's a lot of multitasking you can do with the YouTube Vance on that regard. So if you're worried about YouTube, do not be. So we've covered Spotify. We've covered Netflix. We've covered Disney Plus. We've covered uh, Microsoft Office, we have covered, you know, YouTube. I mean, what else do you want to know? We can go through this all day long, folks. We covered banking apps, Facebook. Facebook is there too. I've got uh, Facebook right there, notifications, all that great stuff. Everything is there. Let's go to Lightroom. You want to see how Adobe Lightroom works? Here, you got it all. Takes a moment to load up because I got about 15,000 photos in my Lightroom. It's crazy, but yes, take a look. You can do full editing capability. I downloaded this from Peta Search, so you can have you can have Adobe products on this as well. So if you're a content creator like me, you can use this. You can share your edits, share with the community. You can do crops. You can do all this stuff. Everything is available on this. So now that I've just showed you how to load apps here on the MatePad Pro, let's talk about the MatePad family. Now there is a MatePad for everyone, as Huawei likes to say. So let's go through it. We got a 10.4 inch, a 10.8 inch, an 11 inch, and a 12. 0.6 inch, okay? That's the big boy that I've been using for this entire review. Let's go to the 10.4. This is gonna be for that maybe that more novice tablet user. It's small, it's lightweight, it's compact, something to keep around the house. If you've got small kids around there and you want them to have access to a tablet, maybe you wanna keep them entertained while you're doing some work because a lot of the parents are working from home now, this might be a good tablet for you. We move on to the 10.8. The 10.8, oddly enough, is more expensive than the 11, and I'll tell you why. The 10.8 comes in at $998, Singapore dollars, mind you. Reason being, this is a Snapdragon 870 in this. The 11 has a Snapdragon 865, so a newer processor, hence it will be more expensive. 998 for this, 10.8 inches, also a great size tablet to have. So the 10.8 will be more for those out there that want to, you know, want a faster processor, want to, you know, access some more pro applications, multitasking. You're gonna need this. Also has a nice camera right here in the corner as you can see right there for some selfie camera action like that. And then also if you wanna go into landscape mode, it's right there in the corner as well. I actually like the camera placement here because this is an area that you're gonna be looking at when you're doing the tablet and it makes more sense to me personally. So I like it there. Okay, moving on to the 11 inch. Now this is only slightly larger than the 10.8, but it does come at a price point of 698 Singapore dollars. Reason, as I just mentioned, the Snapdragon 865 versus the Snapdragon 870 on this. Now you do have the camera here. It is in the center and it's in the bezel. Very small, very compact. It's incognito. But again, you're not gonna get the same performance as the 10.8. There is a difference, but for day-to-day -day tasks, you're not gonna really notice much, okay? Now we move on to the big boys. I've been talking about this entire video. The 12.6 inch, the Pro. 
This comes in at 1,398 Singapore dollars. You've got the Kirin 9000 e processor in this. You've got the higher resolution display. You've got all the bells and whistles in this bad boy. The great camera setup on the front and back on this. This is a really nice tablet. I've enjoyed using this the entire time I've been testing this out. But again, this may be more expensive for some users out there. So 10.8 or the 11 or even the 10.4 will be a great option for you guys out there. Just depends on what you need the tablet for. Anyway, those are my thoughts. And to introduce you to the MatePad family, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Any questions you have on using these MatePads, I'll try to do my best to answer them for you. With that, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, like this video, it helps out our channel a lot. Take care, stay safe, and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.